Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kasaya, this is Saya Swag. Today we are going to be sewing up the Goddess of the Sea shoulder bag by Needle and Anchor Supply Company. Such a fun little pattern. There's lots of variations. She has an extra add-on to this original pattern of other ways to make it. Um, I show you just a couple of those ways. So here is the bag. It is so pretty. I love it. I love these zippered gussets. They are not hard to do. They are super easy. You look at it and you kind of think, oh, that must be hard. It really isn't. It's just like, I mean, if you've done zipper pockets before, you can totally do this. Look how cute that is. Okay, on each side, I got some pretty little purse feet there on the bottom. Those are the purse feet I'm going to be carrying on my website. They are set like rivets and they're super easy, really secure. Um, what else do we got here? This cute little handle. I did it just a little bit different than she has in the pattern um, because I didn't have enough of these O-rings. So I did swivel clips and connectors right there instead of another O-ring connecting it. So that part's up to you. There's also like three or four different ways you can do these connectors onto the bag. Um, you can do it like I did separately. You can rivet them on right here if you feel like that's too thick. Um, you don't have to top stitch over this part. You can just put a couple rivets right there and just top stitch along here. Um, this part right here is the add-on version of the pattern. The original has this zipper going all the way up with a zipper tab up here, which I found to be a little bit thicker. And so if you're worried about the bulk, you definitely need to try the add-on part. And I just like the look of that too. I like how it looks. It's pretty, it looks really finished. So I, I do that from the add-on and I do the little trim on the inside zipper or inside slip pocket. It's just got a little bit of a trim of the vinyl that I used. And I just did a snap closure here. You could do the recessed closure on the add-on pattern. What else? I used vinyl. This is from My Punk. It's super soft. It feels almost like um, leather. It's really pretty. I did not interface any of my vinyl except for the bottom piece. I did a piece of Decaville Heavy. You could use Peltex out of your seam allowances. Um, I used woven fuse on my cotton canvas piece pieces and nothing on my waterproof canvas. So it's really not that hard to cut out. It goes pretty fast. There's not a, too many pieces. It goes together so nicely. I really, really love this style. It is just, you could, all, you could also do a crossbody strap if you would rather, but look how pretty that is. I feel like it just makes a really kind of classy bag. Okay, so <laughs> anyways, um, enjoy the tutorial. Hopefully this helps you. Go buy the pattern. Go sew this up. The link will be below to purchase. And let me know if you guys have any comments or questions. And like and subscribe, please. All right, enjoy the video. Thank you. Okay, let's talk about our pieces for this Goddess of the Sea shoulder bag. Um, there's not a lot of interfacing. It's more of a slouchy bag. You could put interfacing if you didn't want a slouchy bag. Go for it. Um, I am not. I am using vinyl, uh, some cotton canvas, and some waterproof canvas. The only pieces I interfaced were my um, cotton canvas pieces and the bottom of my bag with some um, Decaville Heavy. That's all I did, okay? And I sewed that on. I just did a little stitch three-fourths inch in, sewed my, um, you could use Peltex. I used Decaville Heavy in, okay? So that's my bottom piece. My, all my vinyl pieces, I do not have interfaced. You should have four of these outside pieces and they're mirrored, okay? Cause you're putting them together. Um, you can do two different, you know, colors of vinyl, a vinyl and a cotton, like mix it up, whatever. But I wanted a, a full out all one color bag. So there should be four of those. 
your side gusset pieces are going to be zipper pockets. So to create those, you are going to need four lining pieces like this, four exterior pieces like this that goes on each side of the zipper. And I am doing, there is a add-on and for the add-on, I am doing the zipper side gussets like the add-on um, goddess of the sea pattern. And so you have these top little pieces as well. You don't do zipper tabs. Okay, so I have two vinyl and two lining pieces. You could do all vinyl if you wanted. I just didn't want it to be very thick. So I'm doing two and two. Um, again, this is with the add-on. It's purchased separately than the pattern. It just has a couple different variations. I'm doing the side gussets and I'm just doing um, the inside slip pocket with the little trim on it. That's the only two parts I'm adding on. There's a recessed zipper panel and what else is with the add-on? Oh, a different way to do the connectors for your handle. Okay, um, so my cotton canvas pieces, I'm doing my slip pocket with those. I only interfaced one of them because this is a, a, a cotton canvas and I don't feel like they both need it. So I just interfaced one side of that and you should have two of those. I have my lining gussets for my outside pockets, two of those, and I did interface them with some woven. And then I have my handle um, pieces right here and my connector and little cute ring flap. Okay, so you should have four of those. My little trim piece for my slip pocket. And I just did the pattern calls for a two inch. I'm doing a one inch since I'm using vinyl and I don't really have to worry about my raw edges. And then for my inside, I'm using all waterproof canvas. So I have my two main lining pieces. I have my side gusset pieces and I have my um, bottom inside piece for, so really not a ton of pieces for this bag. It's super cute. It's a fun sew. For my hardware, you just need two zippers for your side pockets. Again, if you're doing the add-on, you'll have a recess zipper as well if you wanted to do that. I'm just doing the snap. I kind of like the snap on this bag. So you need to have a magnetic snap. My name plate. Um, I have some purse feet. I'm going to do rivet purse feet, which I carry on my website. Um, and I'm going to show you how to put those on. They're pretty cool. And then I didn't have enough o-rings to do all of it so i'm using two o-rings on my handle which i'll show you and then i'm using swivel clips okay so i have two o-rings two swivel clips i have one more o-ring for the little flap that goes over on the top and then i have two d-ring connectors and that is it that is all we need for this bag so let's let's get started Okay, so I am going to install my purse feet real quick and I'm going to show you how to do these rivet purse feet. There's two little pieces to it. You have the actual foot and then the rivet connector that goes in it. Um, I have done it with a press and I have done it with just a hammer and they both work. Um, it just needs to be pressed in there enough that it doesn't come out. So if you're like, I don't have a rivet press, I don't want to do that, then just use a little hammer just make sure you protect the bottom of your foot, whatever you're hammering on, okay? And then I have this cool little tool. I'll link it below. It pokes holes. It's the coolest tool I've ever seen in my life. And I have really bad arthritic hands and it's so much easier on my hands than that leather hole punch. So I kind of use this now where I can. Look at that, how nice it poked my holes. Okay, so you want to take your rivet piece and put it through. And then you're gonna take your foot and just kind of clip it on top there. 
And then I am gonna use just my press and I'm not gonna do it very hard. If you do it too hard, it'll smush the foot. So just like a good little press and it's done. Like that's it. It's not, it's not moving. It's not coming off. It's pretty cool. Um, and I don't have to cover it up with tape and interfacing because there's no prongs that are gonna poke through. So these are actually pretty sweet. I kind of love them. So I'm gonna do the rest of them. Again, I'm not pressing very hard. I don't press as hard as I normally do for a normal rivet. Um, and it is, I mean, it is not, it's not moving. It's in there. Look at that. How cool is that? Yeah. All right. I will show you with a hammer real quick as well. My little hammer set here and I'm going to protect it on the bottom. So if you just have, if you don't have a press and you only have a little hammer, that's okay. You can do it this way too. So I'm just putting it in going like this and I'm just going to hammer And it's in. It is not. Yep. Okay. Either way. Either way works. Okay. And then we are done. Next part. So let's work on all of our outside pieces for this bag. Um, our stitch seam allowance for the majority of this bag is 3 8 So a 3 8 inch seam allowance. You're going to take your two pieces, right? I have two that are mirrored. And we're just sewing those together, okay? So flip them right sides together. And we're just sewing those together. Okay, and then once you sew those two together, you're going to flip it and or open it and press that seam allowance open and we're going to sew down each side of that seam allowance with it flattened. Okay, so flatten that out. And we're just top stitching down each side of that. side here. And I'm just pressing that seam allowance open with my fingers behind it as I go down here. Okay. And that helps a lot. piece all pieced together so I'm gonna go ahead and do the next one
All right, so that's our front and back exteriors. I am gonna go ahead and install my nameplate right here, and then we'll go to the side zipper pocket gussets. So I'm gonna work on the side zipper gusset pockets. I'm doing it with the add-on pattern. So it's a little different than the original pattern. It just makes it so you don't have as much thickness up top when you're trying to top stitch the bag. Um, it kind of deals with that. So first what you do is, I don't have to put zipper tabs on these because we're doing it differently, but I'm just making a zipper sandwich, right? So I'm gonna take my first zipper and you can use double-sided tape if you want. I am not going to, I'm just going to baste so my zipper is right side up, my exterior is right side down, and I'm just basting that along the zipper first. And then I'm going to take my lining piece and put that on the back side of this, face down, just like that. So the zipper is in between. And then I'm gonna sew that at a fourth inch seam allowance. you want to press them out and we are going to top stitch them down and that's it that's really all the side outside zippers that's how you do them they're super easy it looks amazing and you think oh that looks difficult but it really isn't it's really a simple technique so I'm just going to top stitch this down again if you wanted to use double-sided tape to keep all this in place go for it do that I'm just kind of pulling this down as I go. Okay, and that's one side of my zipper panel right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side, okay? I'm gonna take my exterior, right sides together with my zipper, and I'm gonna baste that first, or you can use double-sided tape and tape that down if you want. I just don't like to use a ton of double-sided tape where I am sewing because it seems to gum up my needle and mess up with my, mess my stitching up. So if I can leave it out, I do. Okay, and then you wanna take your inside lining piece, other side, make a sandwich and sew that on. Fourth inch seam allowance. You could even do this without your zipper pull on it, but don't forget to add it <laughs> when you're ready to put it all together if you don't like it being in your way. You could totally do that. Okay, and then just flatten this out 
And then we're going to top stitch that down. So once you have that done, okay, make sure they're going the right way. So my zipper's going from top to bottom. You're going to take these two little extra pieces in this add-on, okay, this, and then I did the other side with my lining. And I didn't interface it because it's a canvas and it's the inside of the pocket and I don't feel like it needs it really. Um, so you're going to find the center here And we're sewing this along the top of our zipper panel. Okay, just put the two pieces on. I'm going to clip that. You can baste this first one on if you would like. Baste that on. And then add this back piece. I'm just doing it all at once. Okay but you would baste it first and then you would sew at the 3 8 seam allowance. So they are both right sides down and I'm going to sew a 3 8 inch seam line around uh, above that. And then we're gonna flip it up and top stitch that. Sure, I'm doing this in the right order. Yep. All right, I'm going to baste that up or top stitch, sorry, not baste. Okay, and then after you have this part done, you are going to take your back um, gusset piece here for your outside, and you're gonna put it, just match it up. You're gonna match up your centers with that zipper, and this is kind of your template for the shape of this zipper pocket. Okay, so my center right there, I'm gonna clip the bottom, whoops, and then my center up here. Let me make sure this is the center here. Okay, right there. Okay, and then I'm gonna clip that. And then you're going to, you can either cut out this piece first, or you can do what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna baste this piece on, and then I'm going to cut my piece out to the shape that it needs to be. I'm going to baste along my bottom first to make sure that stays down and then I'm just going to baste around the whole thing so my lining is right sides together with my lining of my zipper panel okay so this is making your pocket on the outside All 
right, so after that is basted on, you see I have it basted on there. And there's my zipper panel, okay? I am just gonna cut this out, and this is my template here, this gusset. Pretty cool, I love it. I like the look of it a lot. Okay, and then that is your gusset piece for your outside of your bag. That's pretty cool, right? It's got your, should have a pocket there. Okay. All right, so go ahead and repeat that for the other side. Same exact process, same exact way, and then we'll continue. Okay, so after you do your second gusset, just like we did our first, we're going to put our actual outside gusset together. So you need your bottom piece, and we're going to lay it with your, um, so your side piece with your bottom piece right here, okay? And clip that together, and we are going to sew that at 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay. And then you're going to flip it and we are going to stitch our seam allowance towards the base of the bag, okay? So top stitch that towards the base of the bag. Just like that. Okay, so go ahead and repeat on this other side. Okay, sew that together. 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then top stitch towards the base. Okay, so that's what you should have, your outside gusset, okay? Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the lining gusset real quick. And you're going to do these at a half inch seam allowance. All right, so the bottom and your side gusset, and we're gonna do the same exact thing that we just did, except use a half inch seam allowance. And on this one, you want to top stitch along each side of the seam. So you're gonna flatten the seam and we are going to top stitch along each side, just like we did on our outside pieces. When we put the main pieces together of the back, we're just stitching down the sides. Hard to see with the white thread and the white. There you go. All right, so go ahead and repeat for the other gusset. Half inch seam allowance.
I do shorten my stitch length to about a four when I sew together pieces, and then I top stitch at about a five. I'm not sure what that means for your machine. I think some machines are different um, with their stitch lengths. I'm not really sure, but that's what I do on my machine. is our lining gusset all put together. And we are going to head to put the magnetic snap on our lining pieces next. So let's put our magnetic snap onto our lining pieces. I, If you're doing the add-on and doing the recessed zipper, then yours is gonna look a little bit different. You're gonna have a shorter lining piece and a separate top lining piece and then you're going to put your recessed zipper in the middle here but I am just doing the magnetic snap um, so I went ahead and clipped my centers on my bag and I'm going to draw a line down this way it's one and a fourth okay so one and a fourth and that's where I want my snap to go little mat my favorite little mat here all right and I'm gonna place my washer there I got my little razor tool this Fiskars oh what is it called this Fiskars soft blade I don't know I absolutely love it I'm trying to figure out a way to get them to sell on my website for all of you eventually I'll have all of my main items that's the hope. Okay, <laughs> put your snap in. And then I have a little piece of um, Decaville light. You can use any kind of little foam or interfacing or flannel or something to protect your lining piece from these prongs. Okay, it's, that's important or else it might rip through eventually. I've had an old, old bag. When I first started making bags, my daughter was using it and this that's exactly what happened. These little prongs made a hole into the lining. So it is important that you cover those prongs. Don't skip that part, okay? Just like that. All right. And then I'll put the other piece on here. And go ahead and clip centers on all your pieces because it's going to help when we put the whole thing together as well. Okay, so I've got my magnetic snaps on my lining pieces. Let's go to my slip pocket piece. So put those aside. I'm gonna get my slip pocket piece and my little trim that I'm using for it. All right, so right sides together and we're gonna sew it like a tube, okay, along the top and along the bottom.
Okay, so I have it sewn along the top and the bottom and I'm just gonna flip that through. And turn it right side out. All right, I am going to take it to my iron real quick and give it a good press and make it crisp and then we'll come back. Okay, after you have your pocket all pressed um, and crisp, we're going to add this little trim on the top. This is just part of the add-on. Um, I do this on quite a few of my bags sometimes on the slip pockets. I just think it makes it look kind of nice. My slip pocket, is going to be face up with the side that I interfaced here on this canvas, just FYI. Um, I marked my center of my trim. If you're doing um, a cotton fabric, you're gonna have a two inch piece of trim. I have a one inch because I don't have to worry about my raw edges. So you're going to fold it in just like a strap if you have cotton. I am going to just put this right below my center line here because when you fold it over, it kind of puts that center line on top of it, okay? And I'm just gonna fold this over the top. And I'm gonna put some clips here so it kind of stays in place and hopefully it's somewhat even. And then you top stitch that down, okay? just like that, and we're gonna top stitch that down. Just like that. That's what the back looks like. That's what the front looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and put another stitch line closer to the edge there. I just wanted to be sure I caught both the front and the back in that first one. The nice part about it being the inside slip pocket is it doesn't get examined as close as the outside of your bag, so if it's not perfect, it's okay. It just needs to look pretty. Okay, so I am going to put this onto my lining. All right, so get your lining piece and, sorry, let me see how far up from the bottom. Two and a half from the bottom. Okay, so measure two and a half inches up. put my slip pocket right on top of that line there and I'm going to baste that down first and then I'm going to separate my pocket. issues today. Now it's too tight. Okay, so I'm going to mark the center of this pocket real quick, which is easy because I have my centers marked here and here. So I'll just kind of line this ruler up. I'm going to mark my center here and I'm going to sew up that center line to separate the two. Ok, 
Okay, just like that. Okay, let's go ahead and sew our main pieces together. So I'm gonna do my lining first real quick. I'm gonna mark the centers of my bottom. And I already have the center of my lining pieces marked. Okay. So we're just going to take our gusset and one of our lining pieces and we're gonna start, oops, sorry. We're gonna start clipping that all together. I am gonna put some clips in my gusset around the curve here. It just helps a tiny bit. Okay, so I start at the bottom and then I'm gonna go to the top here and match this top edge. And come down a little bit. And I need to trim this off real quick. Just a little bit. Okay. Oh. Just start clipping that whole gusset in. Should lay in there pretty nicely. You don't have to fight with this gusset too bad. It lays in pretty nice. Okay, and then go to the other side. To your top. Okay, sorry for the footsteps upstairs, but there's always somebody home at my house. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> I am never alone. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and sew this first side. You are going to start at a 3 8 inch seam allowance up top. You're going to increase to a half inch around the rest of it, and then back up at the top, you go back to a 3 8 inch. It helps your lining set in your bag better when you do it that way, and you don't have a baggy lining. You don't want a baggy lining. That's why we do that. Okay, and then I'm gonna increase to a half inch.
Okay, and then you go back to that 3 8 inch seam allowance up here. Okay, and then go ahead and trim that down. So that's your first side. I do not trim this top part down because I feel like it lies better when you are top stitching if you have something to work with up there. If you cut the seams really short, then it's more bulky, I feel like. So I leave the top of my seam allowance on the bags. Hope that makes sense. Okay, and then repeat for this other side. Now, when you get to this other side, you are going to leave a hole in the bottom for turning, okay? So you wanna leave a turn hole. You could totally add a zipper pocket in this bag as well if you want. If you feel like you need more pockets, go for it. Super easy, just do it on the other side of the lining. Another thing that um, Carissa does in her patterns is when you're leaving a hole in the bottom here, she has you come off at a 90 degree angle. And it really helps with when you're sewing up that hole, it gives it a nice crisp uh, fold to sew your lining shut. It really does help. So I'm leaving this big opening here and then I'm coming back in here at a 90 degree angle and continuing around. Okay, so that is my lining all sewn up. And we are going to go to our exterior next. Okay, one more thing with the lining, make sure you trim the other side, but do not trim where you're turning and sewing up. You don't want that seam allowance trimmed down just everywhere else. Okay, put that aside. And then we're going to work on our outside pieces here. All right, so for our outside pieces, we are just sewing the whole thing at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And nothing special about that. And just go slow, take your time, and you can do it. I have my centers clipped on all my pieces, so I'm starting there. And then doing this the exact same way we did our lining, except the whole thing's done at the 3 8 inch seam allowance. My vinyl stretches a bit, so I don't think I need to put clips in it like I did with my lining. I think it'll be just fine without it. All right, go to the other side here.
Okay, so we're gonna go ahead with our gusset up facing us and sew this on. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and sew a second row of stitches right to next to that row that I just did, just to give my stitching a little more support so it doesn't pull when I turn the bag right side out so my stitches don't pop. Not pop, but like show on the outside of the bag this kind of helps with that stress that's put on that first row of stitching. You don't have to do this. This is just something I'm choosing to do for this bag because I feel like it helps. I did not do this to my lining because your lining doesn't need it. And I don't take it all the way to the top because if I wanna lay my seam flat to top stitch, if I do that second row of stitching up here, it doesn't lay flat. Okay, go ahead and repeat for the other side. Okay, so once that's done, you can go ahead and trim your seam allowances a little bit if you need, and then we'll go to the next step. So next we're gonna work on our connector pieces and our, our closure one with the O-ring on it. So it's one, your two connectors and your closure ring is one long piece. I marked my center and put tape on it. I may do it just a little bit different than she has in the pattern. Um, so feel free to do it whichever way you want, but I'm going to fold my raw edges in here.
And then I'm gonna stitch it at a fourth inch seam allowance down each side. And that part is the same as she has in the pattern, okay? Fourth inch seam allowance down each side. Again, we're keeping it just this one big long piece right now. Have this okay and then we're going to trim an eight inches off of this okay so you're gonna cut eight inches all right all right and then that eight inch piece you're gonna cut in half again and those are your connector pieces all right So here are my connector pieces. And you can go ahead and, oh, you should have stitched this at an eighth inch, sorry, when it was one big piece, so go ahead and do that. It's just for looks, this part. a little bit differently because I am not hooking my connectors all together with my handle. I'm doing it separate with the D-rings and swivel clips, so it's just a little bit different. But here are my connector pieces for my D-rings, okay? I'm just going to go ahead and put them on and give it a stitch at the bottom to close it. Okay, so there's my two D-ring connectors. And so this other piece is gonna be for the little circle that hangs down. I am going to put, I think I'm gonna put a tassel on it too to give it a little extra weight. Um, the way I'm going to put this together is now I'm gonna sew it together with an eighth inch seam allowance and come across here and go back up so it's just one whole piece. How she does it in the pattern is she stitches it first at that eighth inch and then she folds it and then just stitches here and here. So I'm just doing it just a little bit differently. I think they both work. Ah, sorry, <laughs> you're right by my trash. Um, they both work great. So it's whichever way you want to do it. It's fine. But this is how I'm going to do it. Make sure that you protect your hardware in the back if you have a walking foot. I'm going to do one more little stitch over here. Your walking foot will eat this vinyl up with this hardware right there, so make sure you protect it. just like that and I am gonna put this onto my outside exterior piece now I want this on the back because it flips over to the front 
So this is my back side of my bag here and I'm just going to baste it right there. Um, does she let it overhang? Oh, she gives it a little bit of an overhang. So half inch over, okay. Just about like that. And go ahead and stitch that. Just a baste stitch. Onto the exterior of your bag. Just like that. Okay, and then if you want to, you can go ahead and attach your connectors if you're doing it this way. If you're doing it the add-on way, you're riveting on your connectors at the end. So it's, I mean, this part is up to you as well. But this is the way I'm choosing to do it. Okay. And I am going to have it hang over about a half inch, just like my other connector was. Okay. Just like that. And so go ahead and repeat for the other side. I'm just finding the center there so I can center up my connector. About right there. It on so it doesn't move when I put it down. Okay, and then I'm just going to baste that. So many different variations you can do for this bag, which are kind of awesome. You can kind of just make it your own. Okay, I'm gonna put this all together. All right, so I want to. It doesn't matter how you do this next part as long as your right sides are together, okay? So I am going to turn my lining right side out. be perfectly turned out either. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to place my um, lining inside of my exterior. My right sides are together. Again, it can be the other way around. This part really doesn't matter. I have done it both ways and it comes out fine each time. All right. So you're going to want to just start clipping all of this together because we're gonna sew it all up at the top now, okay? So however you want your seams. I think I want them that way. I try to nest my seams up here, okay? start with my kind of my side seams and then I go to my center here and try and match that up as best you can up pretty nicely. 
You shouldn't have to fight it too much or at all, really. It lays in there really nice. Okay, and then do the other side here. Sorry for the weird cutoff. My phone rang and it stopped the recording, even though I had it on do not disturb. I don't get it. Okay. <laughs> so after you have this all clipped together, we are going to sew it around the top. 3 8 seam allowance the whole way. And just take her slow. And then we'll turn it out. Now, if you did the handle the way the pattern has with it connected, your handle should already be connected to your bag right now. Like I said, there's so many different ways that you can do this pattern. So just know that my way may not be the same way that you're doing it, which is fine. I am gonna show you the handle after this though, how, how I'm gonna do it. All right, all the way around. Okay, once you have that all sewn out, we're gonna turn it out through the hole in the lining. Okay, so we're gonna turn this through. So open it, pull it out, and we're gonna grab it through the bottom here. It's a nice big spot. You shouldn't have too much of an issue pulling this back through. Okay. Push everything out, make sure everything looks good. Especially up here at the tops. Again, if you're doing it the other way, you won't have this connector on yet. You'll put it on at the end or you'll have the whole handle on. There's so many different ways you can finish it off with the handle on this bag. So just choose what's right for you. All right, I'm just kind of pushing out all my bulk here. Okay, all right. So that's what we have, ooh, super cute. Okay, 
I'm gonna go ahead and close up the hole in my lining right here and then we'll top stitch. Just go ahead and line this part up as best you can. just like that. And I am going to sew that shut. going to melt those little edges or ends there so they don't fray. And then I'm going to push this back into the bag. Maybe. <laughs> shape. I have not perfected these curves yet on the bottom, but that's okay. Okay. So this is what we have. Super cute. It's going to clip like that and go over. I need to top stitch here and then we are going to do the handle. Okay, so let's go ahead and top stitch it. I am just gonna kind of roll and do put some clips here on my top seam just to help with the top stitching. I have a couple of thick areas right here that I'm gonna have to be careful. It wouldn't be so thick if I wouldn't have done my connector there, but I know my machine can handle it, which is why I did it. So if you don't think your machine can handle this thickness, then rivet your connectors on. I'm still gonna do a rivet right there as well. Okay, I'm gonna to carefully top stitch this now. Wish me luck.
I'm just gonna put a little something over the back of my foot here, under the back of my foot, to help it with this little layer right here and see how nicely it goes over. otherwise known as a hump jumper, if you have the actual tool, which I don't. I just feel like a folded up piece of leather works just as good. Again, right here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Help get me over this. My tummy is growling. <laughs> I must be hungry. <laughs> Then some oil from my machine on it. I'm gonna have to rub it off. Okay. Yep. There we go. Looks good. I'm gonna put a couple rivets on the sides there. And then let's work on the handle. Just another little side note too. I have noticed um, from other people who have made this bag and from pictures um, on the pat pattern, you do not have to stitch across this part. You can just stitch across this main part and stop and start here. And then just put a couple rivets up here. I have seen that too. If this is too thick for your machine, to handle and you wanted to do it this way, just don't top stitch right here and just put a couple of rivets to hold this down. Um, that's a great alternative way to do it as well. So there's like three or four different ways you can put the connectors on this bag. Okay, so we are going to do the handles like she has them. So, well, kind of. I'm using swivel clips instead of all of these uh, O-rings but I'm doing this part kind of the same. So I have my three pieces here, okay? And I am going to connect these all, okay? It's gonna all be one 
together. So I'm going to fold my edges in except for the very ends here. Okay. Like that. And then go to the other side. This is kind of how I do my double sided straps to make it one continuous thing. Um, same type of idea. So just fold your edges in like that. You're going to take an O-ring just like that. All right. And then you're going to take another one because this is going to have two of these on it. Okay. So you want to sew these raw ends together. And this is the bigger, you know, the bigger strap of the three. There's two of one length and one of the other. Okay, so you connect that and then we're going to flatten it or fold all of our raw edges in just like this. Okay, you should have tape on there. Okay, just like that. You're gonna turn it like that. And then we're gonna have it connected just like that and um, we are going to sew it together. Okay, so I'm going to sew this strap together, these two pieces, and just up to this. And then we're going to connect the next ones the same way. So I'm gonna come across here and if you want, to not have any back stitching, you can pull it through at the end and tie. But I am not going to do that. So, but if you do not want any back stitching on your handles, feel free to pull it through and tie. Remember to protect your vinyl under your walking foot with your hardware. Okay, so that's my first little piece. Just like that. Okay, so next we wanna do the same thing with the next side. So grab another piece. And do the same thing.
Okay. And I'm kind of making sure my seams right there are all on the bottom on the same side. Okay, and then you're going to want to stitch that together as well. Right. There's our handle.
Okay guys, we're done, yay! Finish this beautiful thing up, got our handle on. I put rivets right here and right here. I put a couple on this connector piece. I'm not sure if eventually it'll just wanna go down or if I'm gonna need to put like a tassel um, or something heavy on the bottom for it to stay down. All in all, oh my gosh, I love this style. It is great. It's super versatile. You can change it up, put different things. I still think a zipper pocket in there would be great. You could try the add-ons and do the, you know, recessed zipper closure. Um, as I said, tons of ways to do the connectors. But I love, I love, love, love the strap on it. I think it's super cute, kind of classy. Um, and one cool thing is most of this hardware that I used on this bag is hardware I'm going to be selling on my website, SiaSwagBags.com. So hopefully in the next day or two, I'll have it all listed. But uh, most of like the connectors and the swivel clips, uh, the rivets and the purse feet are all going to be on my website. So anyways, check that out. Check out my Facebook group, Sia Swag Bags. We do lots of fun things over there. And click the link below if you wanna buy this pattern. Again, it's Needle and Anchor Supply Company. She has amazing patterns, I love them all. And let me know if you guys have any questions, comments, like and subscribe please. And I will come with more and more videos. I have a couple of lives, so I'm gonna do um, an everyday tote. I have a custom order for that. So I was going to do a live video for that in a few days, probably in like two or three days while I sew that up. And I'll come at you next week with a bag from Shambhala, I think is what my next week one is. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys again next time. Thank you.